Welcome to another video on data analytics. This time it's not only Power BI, it applies equally well to Excel, Power BI or for that matter any kind of data analytics requirement. If the data is clean, then we spend less amount of effort in analyzing it and we can analyze it more. So clean data for simplicity I am going to call good data. But then, once the data is good, at least in the context of Excel, we make it into a table. In databases also, the concept of tables exists. We will see Excel tables in a separate video. But let's continue and understand what makes data clean or good. So here is a checklist of 10 rules. All the 10 rules must be applied to every piece of data you get. So let's see them one by one. This is a no-brainer, but sometimes it's missing. I have column headings, but this one doesn't have a column heading. That's one problem. Second problem is this one has two cells containing column heading. Now you may think you can solve the problem by putting them in one cell or merging cells but that also is not correct because we have another rule which says each column must have one meaning. Here we have two meanings in the heading itself. Why two meanings? Because Android is the operating system and phone or tablet is the size or form factor. So two meanings. The clean version of this data should look like this. The benefit is any number of regions, any number of operating systems or form factors are going to be accommodated without any problem. The second rule is no blank headings. Obviously a very simple thing to do. No blank headings. Put a heading. Now in case of Excel, if you keep a heading blank and then convert it to a table, it will forcibly put some column name which of course you can change manually. The third one is again simple, no duplicate headings. So why is this important? Very often we have purchase date and expiry date. And now if I create a table, either this will happen or you will end up creating something else. So in this case, purchase date and expiry date become single headings and life is good, no duplication. No merge cells. Why do I say that? Because obviously, if you want to manage data for analysis, merge cells don't work at all. Merge cells may be required in the output. Remember, right now we are talking about the input. So here, north and south are merge cells. If you unmerge them and then convert it to a table, these will be empty. So that will be converted to column 2, 3, something like that which is also wrong. This again is not looking very nice. Why? Because in the same cell, we have two kinds of meanings. One is the region and one is, is it amount or discount? So confusion. So the correct way again may surprise you. We have product region, amount and discount, and then we can manage everything. No formulas in headings. This is again a no brainer. But sometimes we do put formulas in the headings for convenience. For example, here I wanted 2013-14. So I have put a simple formula here. It says this plus one. But the idea is we should not do that. Because once you put a formula, Excel table will not accept it. And any database, the name of the column cannot be a formula anyway. So this looks okay because I have removed the formula now. No, this is not okay. We have another rule which says the heading must contain a name for the column. 2014, 15, 16 are not names. Heading looks like a heading, but it actually contains data. So the correct format for this again may be a surprise to you. This is product here amount. Now the data will grow vertically instead of horizontally.
Now this seems obvious, but it can very often go wrong and that can lead to a lot of extra effort for cleanup and analysis. For example, here I have type and in the type I have a main type and a subtype, main type and a subtype. Obviously, if you want some kind of analysis on the subtype, it is going to be difficult. So this is simple and effective. The next one is each column must have same type of data in databases. Obviously, that is automatically enforced. You can't do it at all. But in case of Excel or CSV, you may get different data types and that obviously causes problems. So in this example, what we are talking about is the empty cells. Empty cells do not mean empty. Depending on where the empty cell is, it may mean Jan or Feb or FY19 or FY20. That is a problem. So obviously the solution is fill in the gaps. Now remember, if there was a gap here, we don't want to fill it because that does have a constant meaning. It means the number is not known or it is zero. One of the common reasons is we have a pivot table and we copy paste from the pivot table. If that is the case, then filling the gaps is very easy. So I will solve it right now. Go to pivot table, analyze or design. That's a question. This is nothing to do with analysis. Whether June appeared thrice or once, it is not changing the meaning of the data. So it's a design level issue. And here we go to report layout and choose repeat all item labels. And that's it. You do it before copy pasting the data. And then after you have copy pasted it, just go here and say do not repeat. Job done. The next rule is we don't need any subtotals or grand totals because as I said earlier, this is input data. In the output, you can put whatever you want. In input, nobody is going to look at the input. We are going to use the input to create something like a report which is worth looking at. So here I have these two rows which are subtotal here and all of them are grand total here. We don't need that. Now remember just removing the subtotals and grand totals is not enough. Why not? Because these rows will still remain and they will have empty values next to them. Now look at what we have learned before. Each column must have one meaning and here there is some kind of indentation. That means there is one meaning, subtype, sub subtype. There are three meanings. Means what? We need three columns. Similarly, here instead of heading, there is data. So if you apply all the rules, you will realize the correct data for this should look like this. This may look confusing or even unacceptable because there seems to be a lot of repetition. But trust me, this is clean data. It will allow you to do any type of analysis quickly. The ninth one is no formatting to indicate meaning. This can be a little confusing to understand. Here is an example. Someone has put yellow and red color as background for some data. Obviously, that yellow color has a meaning. Now, who knows the meaning? Of course, the person who put the yellow color will know what it means. But is that meaning mentioned there? No, that's a problem. Why? Because if I put that yellow color today, am I going to remember the meaning six months later? Most probably not. And if I send this file to someone, obviously they are not going to know anything about it. The other important part here is if I want total of yellow or average of yellow, I'm not going to get that because no analysis tool allows you analysis based on formatting. So very important concept. If there is a meaning, put it in a separate column like this. 
So whatever is the meaning you put here. If you still like to look at the data visually with some color based on the status, you can put conditional formatting. Data must grow vertically and not horizontally. We have seen examples of this before, so I'm giving you the problem and the solution in the same place. This is a muster or attendance record. This column is good. These columns are bad because the heading contains data. And obviously this is going to grow horizontally because we are going to add one more column for each day. In fact, at the end of the month, we are going to add a new sheet. And at the end of a year, we are going to add a new file, which is a disaster. So if you wanted to analyze this attendance data across three years, you will have to struggle with three files and 36 sheets. That is why having data in bad format increases your effort. The good format you already know, three columns and any number of dates, any number of employees, it can just continue growing vertically. So bottom line, data growing vertically is good. Data growing horizontally is bad. So here is a summary of the 10 items. There is an 11th rule, which we will see in a separate video. Now we know what is wrong. What do you do next? So here is the process. You look at the input data, go through the checklist, say one, okay, two, not okay, three, okay, like that. Whatever items are not okay, you have to repair them. When you repair all the items, then the data is clean. So far so good, but one big thing is missing. Now at least you know what to repair, but we don't know how to repair. So that is whether it is Excel or Power BI, fortunately for us, we have to learn only one thing. You don't have to do anything manually, no macros, no copy paste. There is a common tool called Power Query, which allows us to do it in either case. And that is the topic for the next video. I hope you like this video. Please share it with others so that their life also improves. This is a quick introduction of what I do. Been doing it for three decades now. That's it for now. See you soon to learn how to clean up data using Power Query. Thank you.